Hello, my name is Michelle, and you're listening to Profit is a Choice. This podcast is part of a series to assist you in planning for the new year in your business. We're going to jump in today and talk about a SWOT analysis, goal planning, and how to preserve our energy so that we can say no more and yes less. Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. Okay, so the podcast today is, like I've mentioned, a series to assist us in planning for the new year in our business. Um, On the last podcast at the beginning of this month, we focused on the pre-planning process. So make sure that you go back and listen to that if you haven't. Um, We looked at things like creating space to do a company review, beginning with gratitude, reviewing your time and offerings and goals, and then identifying what a balanced life would really look like for you. Now we're going to focus on the next steps to doing a full review in your business and making the plan for the next year. If you have never done year in planning, no worries. This is a year to begin. We can start right now. So the first thing that I would have you do, assuming that you've done all the pre-planning work, is start with a SWOT analysis. Some of you may be saying, what is a SWOT analysis? SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and trends. And we use this analysis to dissect our business to determine what's working, what's a strength, maybe what's not working and could be a weakness, and then to look for opportunities, threats, and trends that are happening. Recently, in my Designers Inner Circle workshop, I led my clients through the process of doing a SWOT analysis in a multitude of ways. Historically, I've normally seen it where people just did a SWOT analysis for the whole company, and and we certainly did that. But I love to be able to pick up the framework and overlay it into all types of areas, including our personal lives. So here's what we did. First, we did a SWOT for our company. We thought of the company as a whole, and we wrote down all of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then what are the trends that we're seeing overall in our industry? Then we went back and we kind of took it from a different angle and we thought, let's just do a SWOT for the owners. Maybe you're a single owner, maybe there are multiples. Let's do a SWOT for the owners. What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and trends look like for us? Then we stood back and did it again for all of our employees or our team members, our vendors, our subcontractors. Taking an in-depth look like this at each element in our business really provides us with information and helps shine a spotlight in an area we haven't looked at before. One of the members told me, she's like, I've never really seen my business this way. I've always tried to do a swap for the whole company. And it just felt overwhelming. But when I started breaking it down and looking at each individual area of my company, I started to see things more clearly. You can even do it like looking at the finances of your company. What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? I've done it looking at my marketing plan. What are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? And so just stopping to even ask yourself those questions um, really will will help you in goal setting, which is what we're going to look at next. Okay, assuming you've done your SWOT analysis, the next thing that I like to do is start looking to set goals. I personally am a fan of the book, The 12-Week Year by Brian Moran. And in this book, he describes breaking down each quarter into a mini 12-week year. And why does he do that? Because he knows just like all of us, we do the procrastination thing. And so we wait to the very last minute to accomplish our goals. And there's no way that we can get some of these really big, hairy goals done in November for the end of the year. So by creating quarterly goals, which are more streamlined and individually focused, we have the ability to get four really big goals completed in a year with attention placed on each one. 
I use my SWOT analysis to take my list of goals that might come out of it and rank them. And some of them, you're going to put them together. We're not talking about like a list of 72 goals. We're really talking about what are the three or four things. I now would say like the bigger items that can really move your business forward in the next year. And then I start looking at what will it take to, to get that done? What, what are my human resource needs? What is the time needs? What are the money needs? And I start to put them in priority order. Each quarter, my main company focus is that one goal. So that means all additional time, money, and resources goes to solving it. Using this process allows you to free up your mind and your resources from being focused on the other goals on your list. And most of us learned a long time ago that multitasking really isn't helping us get where we want to go much faster. And by really dialing in on what's most important to my company, I can give it my best and actually get more done than when I used to be juggling a goal list of 12 things for the whole year. I just felt scattered and felt like I was never getting anything done done well or either done completely. And so really I'm um, digging in and looking at it through the 12 week year process has been life-changing. I've probably done this probably maybe the last three, four years. And um, I really, really like it. So try it, choose one big goal each quarter, make it smart, which means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Detail it out, know what it's going to take to get it done. And then the biggest part of it is just commit to doing it. Commit to keeping it at the top of the list and not letting other ideas or goals cause you to go on a rabbit trail and, you know, spend those precious money and time and resources on the wrong thing. Okay, next is a review of your energy. What do I mean by that? Here, here's what I'm saying. There are people and tasks and things that we need to do that drain us of energy and some that excite us and give us more energy. Maybe you've heard of it when we talk about it in the terms of the introvert and the extrovert. Some people are energized by people. Some people are drained by other people. But what I really like is really trying to determine what excites me and energizes me in the workplace, because my goal is to focus on bringing more of that into my life. There could be work that energizes and excites me, books or knowledge, opportunities, and people. And so knowing what makes me feel alive and creative helps me recognize it because I've identified it. And then I see it and can recognize it more quickly when I'm out and about. Conversely, being aware of my energy being depleted helps me say no to the things and the people and the opportunities that are not in my best interest. Maybe it doesn't align with my values or my goals or my why, or maybe it's just a, um, something about their personality or something about the delivery method of a, a product or service that just feels overwhelming and draining. We all know it and we can recognize it, but we don't always give it a voice. We kind of push it down and just power through. And so the more that we learn to, to listen and to hear ourselves, the better off we're going to be. I've shared before, but a great book that I read in 2019 really gave me the freedom to see this and experience this letting go in a different way. It's called Who's in Your Room by Misner, Emery, and Sapio. And in the book, we're offered the idea that everything that comes into our mind never really leaves. It's like it's a steel trap. So they talk about your mind as being a room and that every single person who's ever entered that room can never leave. One of the quotes that caught my attention was this, the quality of your life depends upon who is in your room. Would you have made different choices had you known that anybody who came into your room was going to be in it forever? This is exactly why we can still remember the third grade taunts from, you know, the, the, the person down the hall who called us names or did whatever. It's in our minds. And so working through this book and really thinking about more than just people, because it's, it's mostly written about who is in your room as a person. I started using the same framework again and going back and looking at my services and my offerings to my clients, along with my ideal clients. I tried to look at what was everything that I was saying yes to. And if it didn't move me forward, which is what the book calls an engine, and instead it held me back, known as an anchor, I started learning to say no as much as I could. I started changing things. I just am in my office way too, too much. I'm in my business way too much 
for um, me to be creating areas that are draining to me. And so are you. So as I've mentioned in prior podcasts, there may have been clients, products, and services, as well as vendors in my past that were engines at the time, but now have become anchors. And so I've chosen to do a bless and release with those and moved on. And you can do that too. I will tell you, this is a really deep exercise, but very empowering. So go back and think about what energizes you and what drains you. Lastly, I would say update all of your offerings and processes. So based on what you have just figured out and analyzed and had brought to your attention through the SWOT analysis, setting your goals and doing the energy exercise, what I want you to do is Think about all of that and go back and update your offerings and processes. What are you doing? What are you no longer doing? What are the processes that need to shift or change? Perhaps you want to change a vendor line or bring on something entirely new. Maybe you no longer want to charge by the hour or do one room projects, or maybe you hate making cornice boards and you just learn to say no more. It doesn't matter what it is. Make sure that the majority, if not all, of your products and services and processes are done in a way that moves your company forward with energy instead of draining it, because that's miserable. So it's not enough to do all this work and recognize it. We have to go as far as actually making the updates or taking it off the offering list, which means going all the way back and making sure that you change your website, you change your welcome packet, you change all the collateral that says you used to offer it if you're not going to do it. So create the plan for the business that you want. Okay, that's enough for this one because this is really a lot of work. Just doing these four things can take you a good, I don't know, day or if not more based on how you have to comb through and think through information. In our next podcast, we're going to be doing our final review and we're going to look at HR, finances, and marketing. So keep going with me as we work every day to create the business we desire. If you want to do this in community and to have access to me while working through it, please reach out and let's talk. You can find out more at my website, scarletthreadconsulting.com, on the Work With Me page. You can also sign up for a discovery call and I'm happy to chat with you. I would love to help you be intentional about your business because profit doesn't happen by accident.